Previously on Your USA City Guide live blog. Well, nothing actually, as this is our first live vlog. Let's start off with a few photos from our previous trip while we explain what this vlog is all about. These are all from our 2023 Californian road trip that we did earlier this year, and you can find our old school blog for that trip in the description below. This is the first in our future series of live vlogs. We have previously used this channel mainly for specific travel videos of locations, attractions and reviews. This live vlog series is a new style of ride along video that shows exactly how we go about tackling our trips. Rather than just filming the specific locations and attractions, we have put together a day-by-day -day guide to show you exactly what we go through to bring you our travel guides and reviews. We've always tried to bring the reality of travel to people, and while some of this is less than glamorous, it's what travel is really like. In this live vlog series, we try to take you along for the ride and show you how we plan our days, what tools we use, and how we get around and between locations. We try to show you exactly how we plan and execute each day, along with how we often think on the fly based on weather and how we feel and how things are going. Nothing ever goes to plan and our itineraries are often shattered and then made up as we go along, as you will see. So we hope by following along with the pros, and we mean that in the loosest possible sense, we can really help inspire you to craft your own custom trips across the United States. Okay, let's get started on our three week fall road trip up the East Coast and out to the Midwest with day one a upper class flight to New York on Virgin Atlantic. Our last trip around California was now a distant memory, a whopping three months ago. So maybe not that distant, but it feels like it after a very hard summer. This time last year, we headed out to Maui for Halloween in Lahaina. Unfortunately, this has now been destroyed by the devastating wildfires, breaking our hearts in the process. So this year, we headed to the East Coast and we had a huge itinerary of spooky fun as we hit New York, Boston, Salem, upstate New York, Niagara Falls, Cedar Point, Chicago, and finally heading south to see if we could catch the last of the warm weather in Wilmington, North Carolina. We really were planning on it being epic. And to kick it all off, a little bit of upper class luxury. As usual, to start the trip off, we headed down to London Heathrow to catch the flight across the pond. We always drive down the night before and stay in an airport hotel, leaving the car for the duration in the hotel car park. This just works really well and gives us a stress-free arrival day. We drove down and got to our hotel around 5pm after a pretty event-free drive. We checked into our club classroom. This upgrade was pretty reasonable at £40 per night and we got us a superior room, runway view, dressing gowns and access to the club lounge. The club lounge offers a light breakfast and snacks between 6 and 8pm and most importantly free drinks at that time as well. We were sure we could drink more than enough in two hours to cover the upgrade, but the room was really nice and the food options were actually so substantial we skipped dinner, saving another 50 to 60 pounds. There were two different wines available and a fridge full of beers, so pretty basic but acceptable drink selection. Food wise we ate calamari, stuffed vine leaves, DIY nachos, Caesar salad, cheese boards, red velvet cupcakes and fresh fruit. It was a really good spread. Overall we were really happy and as the two hours drew to a close we grabbed a few drinks and headed back to our room. A little last blast of British TV and then off to sleep ready for tomorrow. Woke up nice and early, packed up and headed out of the hotel. We pulled up in an Uber and sped off towards the airport. Destination Virgin Atlantic Upper Class Wing. We, had, we got an absolute steal on this trip. The initial cost of the flight was £700 return per person for Upper Class Outbound. It was premium return but still £700 for an Upper Class return flight. It, that's ridiculous. We also had booked to fly on Virgin's new A330neo to check out the new upper class cabin. But Virgin did the dirty on us and switched the plane out. We were really annoyed and forced to fly on the A350-1000. There's nothing wrong with that plane, in fact it's a great plane. But we've been on it before and we wanted to try out the new A330neo. We are travel bloggers and aviation enthusiasts after all and we love seeing the new products. After a little to and fro we came to a great solution and upgraded our return flights to upper class using points. So we were on both legs in upper class and on the way back, we were on the A330neo. This also means we get to visit the club lounge at JFK later on in the trip, but for now we were heading to the London clubhouse and couldn't be happier. The upper class check-in was about as busy as we've ever seen it. But to put that in context, that meant we had to wait around 30 seconds for a check-in clerk and a whole five minutes for security. In total, it took around 20 minutes from the hotel lobby to the duty-free hall. You can't beat that. We love the upper class wing, it really makes you feel special and even though the above experience is pretty bad for the upper class wing, it's still incredible. There were some issues on the local motorway so a lot of people were late and all arriving at the same time, 
We share one of the advantages of staying in an airport hotel. We were five minutes away from check-in. We were now out in the melee of the main airport terminal and forgot how bad things can be out there, so we quickly scurried off to the privacy of the upper-class clubhouse. This is probably our favourite upper-class lounge, and we headed in and scouted out our favourite spot in the separate section behind the bar, looking out over the apron. We barely had a chance to sit down before a glass of champagne arrived, and we settled in, updating the social media, messaging family, and enjoying some great food and drink as we waited for our flight. We have a full review of the clubhouse, which we will link to below, but it is such a great space with loads of loads of fancy Instagrammable locations, multiple seating options, sleep pods, showers, outdoor deck, and a fantastic bar. Food can be ordered either from the app or there is a deli bar offering fresh items all day. The drink selection is fantastic with a great cocktail menu, but also a full bar with skilled bartenders who can make you whatever you like. We were here for breakfast which was excellent and we enjoyed several drinks to get us ready for our flight. We had around 3 hours in the clubhouse before heading off to the gate, a little tipsy and very happy, ready for some in-flight luxury. This is a passenger announcement for Amina. Boarding the flight was a little chaotic with no obvious priority lane at the gate, but we kind of excused our way to the front, politely demanded priority access. It seemed a good job we did as there were several other upper class customers politely waiting in long queues they didn't need to and they came forward after following our lead. It's a small thing but the priority boarding is one of the dwindling perks of upper class so we're not going to wait in line when we're not supposed to. We headed aboard and settled into our upper class pods. We had booked row one on this flight as these offer even more space than the rest of the cabin and we wanted to see if this space was worth the payoff of being near the lavatory and the noise and intrusion that brings. Overall these were definitely the best seats in the house, there was very little noise, a couple of times we had people standing over us a little as they waited for a free cubicle but overall there was barely any intrusion and there was a lot of extra leg room as you can see on the video. For anyone with longer legs, this row is a must. These seats can feel a little coffin-like, but on row one with the extra side panel, there's loads of space to spread out and really enjoy the flight. The service started on the ground with a welcome drink. We had our lunch order taken, though we had already pre-ordered our mains, which means you get a few extra selections. And then they took our in-cruise drink order, and we settled down as the flight crew got ready to get us in the air.
We had a little ground delay, but in no time at all, we were up in the air and the pampering began. At the front of the cabin also gets you the best service as the cabin crew works from the front to the back. Vera, the in-flight entertainment system for Virgin, is really starting to lose its appeal. We used to love the system, but it seems less and less entertaining every time we fly. There seem to be fewer and fewer new releases, and the back catalogue is also really poor. It got to the point on this flight we were actually struggling to find something to watch, and this was only a six hour flight. In the end I reverted to listening to music, and Kate just slept. The system itself is really good, and we love the fast and responsive touchscreens, which are pretty massive, and really good at handling reflections. But the content is just not good enough. In today's world of Netflix, Disney Plus and Apple TV, we have become accustomed to watching whatever we want on demand. And the Vera selection is now noticeably poor. The seat itself is really nice, everything moves around electronically and there are lots of little cubby holes and places to store things. The extra legroom on row 1 is excellent and we had loads of room to get comfy once we were in life lap mode. Although we are unsure why the door only closes a tiny amount, it would be much nicer if it closed fully for that private feel. Our in cruise drink arrived straight away and then it went straight onto the meal service. We both chose parma ham as the starter, which was excellent. It was a really large portion of parma ham, with the cheese and the fruit adding nice contrast to the creamy meat. There was an excellent selection of wine, and I chose a nice Italian red to go with my meal. Kate had chosen the pork belly, which was incredible. It was a huge portion, so big she didn't finish it. Left the rest to her human dustbin husband to finish off. And I'd chosen a crispy cod main, which, which was okay. It lacked anything very carby, and... The skin was anything but crispy, but the fish was moist and it was a really good portion. For dessert, I had a lovely chocolate dulce bar, which was amazing, and Kate tucked into a cheese board along with some port. Overall, a really good meal and plenty of wine was served alongside. The service was then left open with people being allowed to sleep, but with a flight attendant on hand at the push of a button. I timed it and I got an attendant in less than 14 seconds. At one point the crew came around with a nice little tub of ice cream which was a fun little surprise. We also spent some time in the loft which is the social space on the plane where we chatted with the crew and had a, a few drinks while enjoying the change of scene. We really like Virgin's use of social spaces and it's great to just have somewhere else to go to. The area looks really stylish and classy and it's nice to have a change of scene and just to get up and stretch the legs a bit. As the flight went along, we checked out the life lap beds. The beds convert at the touch of a button to a full life lap bed, allowing Kate to get some much needed sleep. Whereas I carried on listening to some music and enjoying the views out of the window. One of the low points of the Virgin upper class cabin is the bathroom situation. Overall, we're really disappointed by the bathrooms on these planes. The upper class restrooms are basically the same as the other cabins and they just do not feel very special. We don't expect too much from a toilet while on a plane but just a few touches of luxury would be nice. There were also slight issues around cleanliness and we found we had to share some of the bathrooms with the premium cabin. With around 1 hour 30 left, the afternoon tea service commenced. This was a choice of a cream tea, a chicken bao bun or a lamb flatbread. The cream tea is tempting and is our usual go to. But instead we split the lamb flatbread and a bao bun between us. These were really good. The lamb was rich and spicy with a hint of minty yoghurt and the bao bun had a real kick of chilli. The chicken was nicely curried and there was a spicy satay dressing and some red chilli slices. I really like my heat and actually found the bun pretty spicy so it, it could really blow away some people who aren't as accustomed to heat. We started our descent and had a swift and diversion free arrival into JFK. There was a little delay on the tarmac, but overall we hit the gate 15 minutes early, despite a delay on takeoff. First off the plane, we headed to immigration, having spent the last 10 to 12 hours in the lap of luxury. However, the bubble was about to pop violently. The arrivals hall was seriously packed. We have not seen it like this for several years. We joined the queue as it snaked towards the few open counters and just waited, packed in like sardines. Nearly two hours later we approached the front, naturally stuck behind some of those awkward arrivals who seem to have free passports and take ten times longer than us. Eventually we got through immigration and headed to the baggage carousel and found our bags instantly, two hours being plenty of time for them to process the flight's luggage. 
We then headed out into New York. It was past 6pm and the sun was just setting, and New York traffic was at its finest. Uber was surcharging up to $100, but we sucked it up and jumped in the Uber. In the end, regretting not using the air train and subway. The drive-in was really gnarly. Huge queues and stationary traffic and lots of irate drivers. It was not much fun and our Uber driver was very quiet. Around an hour and a half later, we arrived at the hotel pretty exhausted. It was nearly 8pm when we got to our room and that was 2am on our body clock. I've been being awake since 7am, going on 20 hours. Any sensible person would knock it on the head and hit the hay. We had chosen to stay in the newly built Rio Plaza Manhattan Times Square as it had an excellent central location. We booked the room through our usual provider, Booking.com, in order to lock in our eight and then look for better deals as the trip drew nearer. But we never really found a better rate and stuck with our original booking at around $250 a night. We got given an excellent room up on the 45th floor which had amazing views out over the city and while it was a little small, it was everything we needed and the bed was divine. After settling in a little, as we said, the most sensible decision was to call it a night after a really long day. But we are not sensible. First order of business, Times Square. This is nobody's favourite place, but it's an essential visit for everyone. We were literally just a quarter of a block from the iconic square, so this was the first place we headed to. We instantly got that system shock you get from New York. Hit by the bright lights and throngs of people, the square is one of those places you really forget how bonkers it is until you go back. After a quick little round, we stopped for a quick pit stop at McDonald's and then headed off to 235th, one of our favourite bars in Manhattan. We were heavily surcharging, so we decided to walk down to the bar, get in and take the weight off our feet. The bar has certainly grown in popularity since we first came all those years ago. Back then the small deck was half empty most nights, now the vastly increased rooftop space is packed to the gills with pretty much standing room only, even on a Wednesday night. This was fine by us, as we were mainly here for the view. And there is bad news on that front, nothing stands still in New York, and the city is constantly growing. We visit so regularly, 12 months as a minimum, and every time a new building has sprung up like a mushroom. And this time one had sprung up right in front of 235, practically blocking the view. The building is no looker either, and it just sits right in the skyline like an ugly eyesore, and it's there forever now. It's still an incredible view, and still one of our happy places in New York. We had both had more than enough to drink on the flight, and were more in hangover mode than drinky mode, so we just took in the view and enjoyed the overall ambience of the bar. Eventually, the enormity of the day started to take hold and we started to flag. So we called it a night, jumped in an Uber and headed back to the hotel, ready for tomorrow. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel as we bring you our subsequent days on our road trip up the East Coast.